This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, the podcast of me, Sarah Raven. And this is episode five of our kitchen garden mini series, which are the nuggets I think you need as a beginner or somebody who wants a sort of reset and re-enthusing about their veg patch or their veg window box or whatever it is. In the previous two episodes, I did my favorite herbs and then my favorite salads. And to be complete, to give us the full gamut, I wanted to do favorite veg. So you might think, well, they're all veg, but you know, herbs are herbs, salads are salads, and veg is veg. And what I mean by veg is leafy greens, fruiting veg like tomatoes uh, and cucumbers and chilies, etc. Rooty veg, you know, that's what I consider to be veg. And if you listen to an earlier episode, you will hear me saying very clearly that I divide my year between August and April with hardy annuals mainly and perennials and April to August with half hardy annuals. And that applies with veg too. So I've picked four, as I did with the herbs and the salads. And the first is a leafy green. And I guess these are probably the thing I eat more than anything else. And that is Swiss chard. And Swiss chard is the one with the big chunky white stems and the green leaf. Uh, Rainbow or bright lights chard has a multicolored, which you get in very kind of decorative fancy restaurants. The thing is, to be brutally frank, Swiss chard tastes much nicer than the bright lights chard unless you pick that as a baby leaf. And so I would put that more in the salad category. But for a leafy green, chard is so much cleaner and I think lovelier than perpetual spinach, which would be the other alternative. And you literally can sow it twice a year max, and you can have year round picking. And it's just, I always have this sort of silly joke, which is if I was sent to prison and I was allowed to take one packet of seed with me to grow food for my entire wing in the prison, I would take a packet of Swiss chard because you can literally pick it 12 months round from two sowings, one in February, March, and one in sort of July, August, and that will give you year-round picking. And the key thing with Swiss chard is how to harvest it in the winter. It doesn't matter so much in the main growing season, but in the winter, you just want to pick the outer leaves, leaving the heart intact. And that will mean you end up with this funny little sort of stump of a sort of tree trunk with the leaves coming out the top. And that lifts the vulnerable part of the plant away from the cold, wet, frosty soil and makes it hardier. So particularly because we're talking about August to April crops here, you want to pick it carefully and that's how you pick it. The second crop for me, really, I could almost put in the April to August category and a lot of people do sow them then, which are carrots. But there's much more carrot fly about if you sow in April, May or June than that is if you leave it a bit later and sow in August to April. But you can't sow in the depth of winter, but you will get more pristine carrots if you avoid the main kind of proliferation of the carrot fly. And we did a trial this last summer, a variety called Oxheart, which is similar to Paris Market or Parabell. So it's one of those round ones. And we had absolutely pristine carrots very, very quickly. And I would just go out into the garden, pick them, wash them under the tap and eat them just like that. Absolutely fabulous. So definitely for me, for sowing this month, pretty pronto would be a carrot. And I would eat it as a little baby. Absolutely fantastic. And then I would sow again in February, March. Of course, a classic for August to April is a leek. And 
you're still just about in time to sow leeks, particularly if you sow them quickly into a seed tray and then prick them out. And I would go for a really quite a hardy winter one like St. Victor. And even if you're picking them almost at spring onion size, which you might be if you're sowing now, they're still really wonderful. And I, I love just chopping them sort of with into a baked potato, just really quickly, just blanched in a, in a little bit of water or perhaps fried in a bit of olive oil. And then with perhaps some cream cheese or cheddar even, and it's just absolutely delicious. But the point about a variety like St. Victor is they're purple. So they not only taste fantastic, they look fantastic in your winter vegetable garden. So for August to April, I think you've got to have a leek. And then finally, my number, number one, actually it's got to be two, hasn't it? Because we've already had chard, would be a kale. And for me, from August to April, it would be red boar. And in my year full of veg book, I, I write about red boar kale as the duchesses in their crinolines of the vegetable garden. Because whatever the weather, if it's windy, if it's wet, if it's snowy, if it's frosty, they're out there looking absolutely spectacular, grand, huge, and amazing. And so kale red boar for me, oh, you know, I would just be, I would be sad without it. And the key thing with kale is unlike cabbage, where you harvest the cabbage heart and that's it, the root has done its thing. With kale, you just break off the leaf off the main stem and they grow back again and then again and then again. So a big plant of kale red boar or ideally a, a patch with perhaps eight plants uh, will keep you in the most delicious food for months at a stretch, which I would be bereft without. And actually, we're doing a cook-along. I'm going to show you how to cook my favorite recipes for this time of year as another mini-series, and I'm going to show you how to use kale in one of the most delicious salads that you can possibly imagine. So have a look at that if you haven't already. So August to April, those are the four. And then from April to August, well, guess what? The leafy green chard is there again. But if not that, I would then add in a spinach for sowing in March, for harvesting April, May and into June. And then again for sowing in June, for harvesting in July and August, I would go for a, a really quite sort of tolerant spinach. And the one I love best is called Rouge Cardinal. And it's got beautiful crimson stems and green leaves. And I find it most slow to bolt of any of the spinaches, and I love it. You've got to keep picking it very regularly to stop it bolting. But I, what I do is I just blanch it in boiling salted water for 45 seconds. I then push the water through a colander with the spinach in it with a big metal spoon. I push it, push it, push it. I let it cool a bit, and then I get it into the palms of my hand, and I make it into little spinach bullets that just filled the palm of my hand, which I squeeze the water out. And then I freeze them like that, laid out flat in a baking tray. And then I can bag them up. And then I've got delicious spinach to have with my scrambled egg or into an omelet or whatever, uh, just readily available in the freezer. And it's just worth knowing that if you eat eggs with spinach, they enhance, they have a symbiotic relationship with each other. And the egg is better absorbed with the spinach. The spinach helps the absorption of the nu nutrients in the egg and the fat in the egg helps you absorb the iron in the spinach. So they have this beneficial effect on your health and are more nutritious for eating together than apart. So that's why I try and uh, freeze lots of my spinach. So the next plant from April to August would undoubtedly be a broad bean. Now, broad beans can't compete really in terms of productivity. They're one of those things that crop very heavily for a short period of time. But gosh, I would miss them if I didn't have them out there in perhaps, if I'm lucky, from the last week of May um, through June and into July. And then they tend to get rust. And, and anyway, we've eaten them all by that stage. But broad beans are just wonderful if you pick them fresh and cook them straight away into boiling water and then just dress them with just a little bit of olive oil with some summer savory. And summer savory helps protect against the broad bean aphid. So we tend to plant them together too. So that would be something to sow 
in February or March that you can then harvest in the April to August section of the year. That reminds me of the next one, which is if you're to grow any pea and you want high production and unbelievably delicious texture and taste, you want Nairobi, which is a sugar snap pea where you can eat the whole pod and the peas inside. And of all the ones we trialed here, it wins hands down every single time. If I put a blindfold on people and I give them 10 different pea varieties to taste, every single person records Nairobi as their favorite. It's streets ahead of anything in terms of deliciousness. And it's quite productive too. So I'm crazy about Nairobi peas. And then final one for April to August, it's got to be a courgette, of course. And just remember with these, don't harvest courgettes at supermarket size. Harvest them at the size of the base of your thumb. Romanesco is my favorite with the classic ribs down the side of the fruit. And you harvest them young when they're nutty. They've still got their flour on, uh, which you can always stuff. And they're completely delicious. And I will give you in our cook-along series, which we're going to do with videos filming me making my favorite recipes at this time of year, I'm going to give you the most wonderful tempura recipe for cooking courgette romanesco as one of the things. So those are it. My favorite veg from August to April, it's chard, carrot, perhaps ox heart or a similar variety, leek like St. Victor, kale red boar. From April to August, it's spinach, probably rouge cardinal, broad bean, probably the really tender variety called stereo, pea, Nairobi and courgette romanesco. So in the next episode, I'm actually going to tackle just really quickly and simply the main pests and diseases that people get worried about in their veg garden. And of course, the main one are slugs and snails, because there's nothing more depressing than planting all your lovely things, taking all that time, and then you don't get to eat them. The slugs and snails have the lot. So we're going to talk about that in the next episode. See you then. You can find more information, photos and advice sheets on all the plants and recipes we talk about on this podcast by heading to the show notes or at sarahraven.com forward slash podcast.